Hello, good people. Welcome to the Safe Happy Life channel with me, Dr. Rose M. It's been a while. I've been away doing some urgent uh, issues I had to attend to, but I'm back now. And uh, today I would like us to talk about psychological care of terminally ill patients. Specifically, we focus on cancer patients. When a person is diagnosed with cancer, it is a message that is received with shock, denial, anxiety, hopelessness, death sentence kind of feeling, depression, anxiety, among others. The truth is that not all cancers lead to death. Very many are treatable, particularly when they are uh, diagnosed in the early stages. However, that does not erase the fears that a patient goes through. And some of these fears are that uh, the patient now starts to remember what they have read or know about the disease. And uh, some of these people now start imagining that uh, the next thing is they are going to die. They are going to lose their hair because of the chemotherapy. They are going to have black nails, dark skin, painful skin because of the chemotherapy uh, effect. They are going to suffer nausea. They are, they are going to, to suffer uh, body part loss in case of surgery. Let's say if, it's put, uh, if the cancer is diagnosed in the lungs, they start thinking how they are going to lose their lung or their breast. Uh, and the processes that they have to go in the theater uh, to, get to, uh, to get through with the operations. And the fear, the excruciating pain that is associated with cancer. They also fear loss of job. I've been diagnosed with cancer. Now I'm going to lose my job. And the uh, uh, physical ability to earn a, live, uh, a livelihood. They also fear, uh, should I be treated and it's, it's, uh, it's treated or it's I'm healed, will it recur? Uh, they also feel, the, they have the fear of loss of reproduction or reproductive ability in the case of prostate cancer, in case of cervical cancer, ovarian cancer and all the others. So these are the fears that crisscross the mind of a person who has just been diagnosed with cancer. Once that phase is over and they settle down, now of course uh, caregivers need to spend time with them. And this is what I want us to focus on today, helping cancer patients cope with the psychological stress. You as the caregiver, I as a caregiver, how do we help them cope with the disease? Number one, cancer is painful, in more often than not. The first thing we must do is to ensure that the patient is as pain-free as possible so that they are comfortable to to uh, live with, they are comfortable to with themselves, and and they can, they, when they don't feel pain, they feel calm. Number two, we need to get social support groups. This may be like-minded uh, 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 persons who may be having the same the, the same uh, issues in their families or just the family uh, system that, that supports the person uh, when, when they are un unwell. We also need to read a lot about the disease so that we get, uh, we become knowledgeable about uh, what is it that we are dealing with, how are the effects, what do we expect, what are the, the, like, the, the effects of uh, the drugs, the other forms of treatment like radiotherapy, chemotherapy? What is it that we expect? We educate ourselves. And uh, the other one is make 
or create opportunities where the patient will listen to successful stories, uh, successful uh, coping experiences from others who have gone through it. And of course, wherever, wherever possible, they should be offered counseling. And this disease weighs so much on the mind that sometimes the patient can get into very high levels of anxiety or even depression. Let them get uh, antidepressant medications from the doctor as is necessary. Then we also need to learn to help them with uh, stress management skills. We should also keep them active through exercises, through movement here and there so that the, 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 the blood keeps flowing in their body so that their joints keep moving for as long as it is possible. Of course, I am aware that in some cases, the patients are bedridden, in which case we can help them move the limbs uh, wherever possible. Now, the next one uh, that would help them cope with the psychological stress is to simply be present with the patient without necessarily even offering advice, just being there with them. They know that they are in the company of somebody and that takes away even the stigma of I have cancer and uh, therefore nobody wants to be with me and uh, I am alone. When, when we are present in their presence, it, it helps them uh, elevate psychological stress. The other one is creating a cheerful environment for the patient. If you can crack a joke and make them laugh, the better, so that uh, the, the body is eased of the pressure and uh, the stress of the disease. Then uh, we also need to allow the patient their downtime. It is not always that the patient is going to be upbeat. There may be times when they are a bit down, let them go through, through that phase and then also uh, re, uh, as they come up, let us be with them because it is normal to feel down, it's normal to go down, but at the same time, we help them to come up. Uh, we should also run errands for the patient so that uh, they don't feel confined to the bed and they need to do one, two, three, and there's nobody to help them. That increases their stress. The other thing we need to do is to keep, posit keep positive, encourage optimism and plans for the future with the parent so that uh, with, the, with the patient so that the patient does not feel like beyond this bed there is no life for me. Talk, talk about the future, talk about the things that we need, we need to do or the patient needs to do in future and plan so that that gives the, the patient the drive to move on that next year, a time like now, I'll be doing one, two, three or next month or in the next six months, I'll be doing this. That gives the patient drive and motivation to cope the disease. Then we also need to help them plan and use finances well as a family, as the caregivers, because once the patient realizes that they have run out of finances and then they cannot possibly go for the next chemotherapy session, then it becomes a source of stress. Uh, helping to plan and use the finances available well to alleviate psychological stress in such patients. And the last one is shower them with compassion, shower them with love so that they do not ever feel that they are a burden to you as the caregiver. When they are surrounded with love, they are surrounded with compassion, they feel they're in the right place with the right people at the right time and the only way forward is looking into the future with optimism. And in the worst case scenario, looking into the end day with optimism, or with, with happiness, with courage that they could be transiting 
to the other live. Thank you very much for being with me. Keep subscribing, keep sharing, and keep uh, dropping your comments so that uh, we keep educating each other. Bye-bye.